Good morning. This is Mark Baer. You're watching the Your Town Television program. My guest, David Wesley Richardson. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so we just had a show at the uh, Cherry Center, which I attended, uh, the Cherry Center in Carmel. Uh, three artists, and you were one of the artists, and featured among your work was uh, a series of miniatures from your book, Resemblance. Yes. And this is, uh, so, uh, this is a book that, for people who are readers of Proust, which, uh, let me kind of say, Marcel Proust, for a writer, uh, writers usually have one or two or three master texts that they always go back to in their lives. Uh, it may be, you know, for me, it's Hemingway, it's James Joyce, uh, it's the King James Bible, it's Shakespeare, uh, uh, Fitzgerald Faulkner, uh, regionally Henry Miller. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the master text for me mm -hmm. is uh, Remembrance of Things Past, Marcel mm -hmm. Proust. That's the, the, that's the book I return to as a touchstone. That's a good one. And uh, I believe, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, true for, for many writers. So while uh, Proust may seem an obscure topic, uh, you know, uh, it, it's not as obscure as it might seem. And what this book is, uh, Resemblance, let me hold this up. Uh, this is a, you know, first of all, it's, it's a, I, I, I hasten to call it a book, it's book form, but it's really an art piece. Uh, it is uh, a collection of paintings that you uh, executed with characters from the book. You reimagined them, uh, you, uh, and then you painted them, and then you use quotes uh, throughout the, the, the novel. And this is a, you know, over, over, this is a book over several uh, volumes, over several thousand pages. Uh, so it's a, uh, hard to sometimes keep the whole thing together. And, and so this is a, as, as a guide and as a, you know, as a touchstone for the book, uh, this is really invaluable. And I'm going to ramble on here a little more before I even let you say a word. That's good. That's good. Okay, just to, just to frame this, and this is uh, on, on the inside page. There's a quote from Walter uh, Benjamin, and he it's from an essay about the image of Proust from 1929. The similarity of one thing to another, which we are used to, which occupies us in a wakeful state reflects only vaguely the deeper resemblance of the dream world in which everything that happens appears not in identical, but in similar guise, opaquely similar to one another. And you took that quote to come up with the title name Resemblance. So let's talk about this. Uh, the Benjamin gave me the title as soon as I saw the uh, quote, I, I realized that uh, everything, again, resembles everything else in either time or space or looks or adventure or imagination. Um, and then the unity of the universe kind of appeared, as it does over and over and over again in, in uh, All of Us Here's to Tom Perdu. So I thought, oh, this is a great title. Okay, so let's talk. How did you Let's talk a little bit about yourself and how did you get to start doing these miniatures and, and describe what the process was and what the evolution of this work was. Um, a very close and dear friend of mine who's a French teacher had suggested I read Proust for years and years and years and years. And I started, I failed, I started, I failed. Finally, I don't know why, Proust took. Marcel just sort of grabbed me and said, okay, this is it. Here's the rhythm. Follow this. You'll like it. I did. I got it. How old were you and where were you? Uh, when I finally read it, I was yeah. 63, I think. I was old. I was getting old. -er. And uh, 
I took three years to read it. Uh, I'd stop. I'd watch a lot of TV, movies, read other things, start another volume. Finally, I got through it. A couple years later, I was sitting in my studio with nothing to do. Uh, I picked up a piece of balsa wood that had been laying around, and I just started painting a, a, a figure. It turned out to be a woman. I put it on the easel, it dried, she dried. I went and started dinner or something and came back a day later and realized that I'd painted one of the characters in the book, Orion de Guermont, and went on from there. I realized I could do the whole thing with enough time and energy, and, and I, I got it. One of the things is, uh, I think that inspiration is in interesting. I was inspired sort of genuinely. I didn't start out to paint these things. It came to me. And then the deeper you got into it, the... Yeah. And, yeah. and so w what insights did you, um, you know, again, there's the reading experience and then there's the, the, the experience that you had personally with the book. Tell me, t tell me what was the, this just going through uh, and the, doing this process, this the, book. The human, the human figure, the face, the, the portrait, the, the, the bust, uh, the characterization of uh, how everybody looks, the resemblance of, of my thoughts of the characters to Marcel's depiction of them in the, in the novel, and um, the combination. Uh, I mostly paint landscapes. I've mostly painted landscapes during my life. And uh, I was this opportunity to paint people with a good source of people. There are 300 characters in the novels. I've only painted 74 of them. The opportunity to do that was quite exciting to me. I loved it. They're, they're beautiful. Let's um, just just take uh, let's uh, Alex. Let's take a look at some of the uh, the work. Let's start with what the miniatures look like. This is what uh, people were seeing at the Cherry Center, and um, this is kind of a, a, a row of them. And, and I was wondering if if they didn't know the book, what it meant to them. I mean, they're all. Uh, they're all standalone in their own world, and they probably have to live by themselves in their own world. In this situation, I think they held up well, whether you knew the book or didn't know the book. You're you're a, you're a, uh, a really fine portraiture. Let's, but your 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 chief thing is as a, as a landscape painter. Let's talk about some of this. Uh, this is a watercolor. It's a completely different medium. It's a larger size. It's not too big. It's a watercolor of a storm approaching. Uh, a field and a, and, a, and a group of trees in France from last fall. Again, basically the same idea, but it's, it's uh, late fall in, in France. Um, less leaves and more wintry. Well, way out in the distance there is Point Sur. And um, it's a watercolor. Uh, it's a, a view of... Um, the coast here, which is quite inspiring to so many artists, myself included. Again, and some waves on rocks and rocks at Little Sur. This is a, a, a painter, a planar east, imagined in Carmel Valley off of Scarlet Road. Um, the river is down there, and um, often you see lots of you know painters. It's a, uh, this, is, this is the Thule River Canyon. It's actually, the painting itself is actually wider than it is on the screen. It's, this is 11 feet wide by 5 feet high. It's acrylic on canvas. And it shows the meeting of the Spanish explorers with the Yoka Indians in 1850 or something. This was, all, this was at the, the uh, Cherry Center show. This is from 1971. It's called Tomato. I did it in Carmel Valley in 71. Uh, the model for the uh, armless woman in profile was at the opening. Uh, some winter uh, pen and inks on, um, on paper. Just leafless, almost leafless trees. I like to draw. I like to work in pen and ink. Uh, something about the, the the crisp, you know, the black and whiteness of it. These are these were done in France. I'm lucky to go to France every once in a while and do some work. 
The Carmel Valley, um, where you live, is a very bucolic, very uh, enveloping, uh, beautiful uh, place for a painter to be. And, that, and I guess you feel fortunate to, to be there, and, and it is an inspiring place. I mean, you have a choice oh, yeah. where to live. Oh, yeah. And it has been for years and years. Uh, I mean, it's a very beautiful place, it's geographically, historically. Um, climate's good still. The river is raging right now with the recent rains. It's, it's quite beautiful. If you're a landscape painter, it's, it's, it's very good. There are high views, there are low views, there's small little intimate places to paint. There's the expanse of the ocean. It's really quite th thrilling. I mean, you can, you can find almost everything here. There's city scenes, like in Monterey, Pacific Grove, I mean, wide vistas if you look out from Laurella's grave. So this is a bit of heaven for a, for a landscape is. painter. It is. It is very good. And there's also, of course, a market here for, a certain, for, for artists. So you can actually make a living as well? Well, yes, you can, but you have to work very hard. Um, so just to, uh, to put the landscape part together and the, and the Proust part, I want to go back to the book, and I'm going to read a... Th this is about his um, Hawthorne hedge, and this is at the beginning of the book, and I just want people to hear Proust's words so they, they kind of understand a little bit what uh, we're, we're talking about. Uh, I found the whole path throbbing with the fragrance of hawthorn blossom. The hedge resembled a series of chapels. Those walls were no longer visible under the mountains of flowers that were heaped upon their altars, while beneath them the sun cast a checkered light upon the ground, as though it had just passed through a stained glass window. And their scent swept over me, as unctuous as circumscribed in its range, as though I had been standing before the Lady Altar. So Proust often uh, equated nature and, 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 uh, and uh, the, uh, as a church, as, as, a, as a sacred place. And he found, uh, you know, he, he liked to conflate the two. That was one of his, his metaphors. And for, uh, again, a nature painter and for a nature reader, the nature writing in this book, uh, because of the, the metaphors and the metaphorical vision, uh, you know, I, 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 I think of the apple trees in the orchard that looked like uh, the dancing women in their soiled ball gowns. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a way of seeing yeah. that uh, yeah. for, for any, any landscape painter I, yeah. I recommend. And um, for anybody wanting to make the, the plunge, in, you know, it's reading Proust is on, you know, everybody's literary's list, it's a, it's a daunting journey. And getting through the first hundred pages is like climbing a rock wall. It's, it, it's difficult until you find at the other end that every word make, you, 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 ha, you come up against these first hundred pages that none of it makes any sense, that it's all boring, it seems as boring as can be, and yet later you'll find that every word made sense, every word had meaning, every word was in place, you couldn't take any pebble out of that, you know, off of that mosaic, or it would have all fallen apart. It's 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 an uncanny book that way. That's right, Mark. And it's the the clarity in in uh, Proust's writing is is there once you uh, wipe away the obscurity of of the fear of 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 the depth and the the, the breadth of his writing. And so, and let's talk about you know, a, as a writer, how did it you know kind of just in, in, inspired you to, because it's it, it, it's such of such high achievement. You know, as Virginia Woolf said after she re, she read it, she said, "Why why do I want to write anything else? Yeah. There, it's, yeah. I, I, I've done it." But it's it's for every you know you know for it's not just for writers, but for visual artists, for for everyone in the arts. It's it's a clarity of vision, almost a Vermeer-like way of seeing the world, yes. that's those, those clear lenses that, that ups everybody's game. That's and, I, right. and I just wondered if, if, if that was some of your uh, experience. Yes, it was. Um, um, Charles Swan, one of the major characters in the book, um, perceives everything in his world as a, a, a painting, from a classical painting. Uh, from uh, Botticelli to Vermeer, 
Uh, one of the characters in the book, Bergot, the uh, genius writer, dies in front of uh, the little patch of yellow in Vermeer's view of Delft. Yeah, in view of Delft, yes. Because it's so gorgeous. Proust, everything is a lot of things, but one of the main things that Proust is, is the ability to put the universe into uh, uh, an architectural format, g Gothic and classical. A Baroque and uh, a modernist, certainly modernist, with uh, his writing, and 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 then again in a visual way that uh, preceded cinema. So, yes, he, 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 or he he was he was seeing the early language of cinema, yes. and uh, the, the, and using much of, uh, anticipating later what would become very much of the of the techniques how how he would in right. and out of a of a of a scene how he would change his camera angle multiple takes on any given situation. Uh, very interesting. But more importantly, how do people find you? How do people find me? Yeah, well, give them your website. Oh, uh, www.davidwesleyrichardson.com. Yeah, so you can see this work online. I suggest that you go there, um, you know, because I want to support you. And, and also the Cherry Center was w wonderful. I mean, it was Oh yes, kind of my role on the, the on the film is I, I'm kind of the outsider that came to town and I'm looking for exciting things. I've been here, you know, 13 years, but I'm still the outsider. But there's always magical events here, and there's always something of, of tremendous sophistication here. Yes. And and the, the little cherry center in Carmel uh, uh, by the sea is always. Adding something great to the to you know to the community. It's a gateway to the community to find uh, to, to look at to experience fine art, and theater, uh, visual and dramatic uh, art. So anyway, I wanted to thank you for being here. Uh, this is Mark Bear. You're watching the Your Town Television Program, and my guest David Richardson, David Wesley Richardson dot com, and we will be back. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure.